Good day, grade eights, and welcome to Tumamina Teaching. You are tuned into your fourth and final grade eight EMS lesson for this term. In the previous lessons, we looked at a few accounting concepts, and the last lesson, we looked at three types of source documents, namely the receipts, deposit slips, and cash register slips. In this lesson, we will be discussing three other source documents, electronic fund transfers, bank statements, and cash invoices. Are you ready to learn and become more business savvy? Let's go. Before we start, we need to quickly recap on what source documents are. Do you remember what a source document is? Source documents are financial documents that the business uses to record its transactions. The purpose of the transaction, such as to whom the transaction was made, the date of the transaction, and the amount of the transaction. All these details are captured together to make source documents. All right, let's start with the electronic fund transfer or EFT. This is the transfer of money from one bank account to another, either within the same financial institution or different financial institutions via digital devices like a cell phone or a tablet without the intervention of the banking staff. So an EFT is a transfer of money from one bank account to another digitally. Each EFT has a reference number that must appear on the payment authorization form. The EFT number serves as a source document so that the specific payment can be easily traced in the future. The second source document that we'll be looking at is the bank statement. The bank statement shows the client how much money has been deposited into the bank account and how much money has been withdrawn from the account. The bank statement reflects the bank's transactions with the business. The business can access the bank statements at any time during the month and at the end of the month, the bank sends them a bank statement which shows the amounts deposited and withdrawn in the business bank accounts and the business can use it to compare it with its accounting records. The last source document that we will be using is a cash invoice. Businesses that receive larger payments or require more information on their transactions for themselves or for their clients prefer to use a cash invoice rather than a cash registered slip. A cash invoice contains more information than a cash registered slip and is in fact a request for payment. Let's go to Baker Brenda and let's have a look at the cash invoice a little bit closer. Firstly, it is important that the business's information appears on the cash invoice. Then secondly, the client information should also appear, followed by an invoice number. Fourth, the most important is the details of the specific transaction. For example, in this case, Baker Brenda sold a lot of sourdough bread and croissants to JJ providers. This is a larger payment and that is why a cash invoice will be more preferable. The total amount payable by JJ providers should also be on the cash invoice and then, of course, the banking details of Bake at Brenda. Let's just summarize this lesson in half a minute. Here we go. So for EFTs, that's electronic transfers of money from bank to bank, whether in the same institution or different institutions. Now bank statements can be accessed at any convenient time for the business. And the bank sends bank statements to the business at the end of the month. The last one we looked at was cash invoices. This is a request for payment, either if someone wants more information on a transaction or for larger payments. Thank you grade 8 for journeying with me in these lessons. It's been a splendid time with you. Now, if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed, it's completely normal. And if there's things you still don't understand, please go again and watch the videos. These are the fundamentals that you need for grade 9. Thank you very much and see you for term 2. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. 
These lessons are very costly for us to produce, but we are very determined to keep it free for everyone. We produce these lessons at the rate at which it gets funded. So here are three ways to join hands with us to keep it free for all South African learners. First off, share our resources so that more people can benefit. Secondly, you can add us on my school as a beneficiary. This will help us immensely. Thirdly, we give Section 18A certificates, so your contribution will have a tax benefit. So let's join hands and collaborate for free quality education for all South Africans.